Once you uh, open your EC2 dashboard, you will see some data here, so like how many instances you have running and how many um, keepers you have configured and so on. You can create a new Amazon instance right from this page by clicking on this uh, launch instance button or on the left side, you have additional navigation. You can go to uh, instances panel here. And then if you click on the very first one, it will list down uh, currently configured instances. In your case, I think it will be empty. I have one which I use for my Swift developer blog. I start it when I need to process some scripts and I stop it when I don't need it. So I don't have to pay for it because with Amazon, you pay per hour. Like uh, the, the, the cost is very cheap, uh, but um, you still pay for your server when it's running. And when you don't have it running, you don't pay for it. Uh, okay, so to launch a new Amazon instance, you click on this uh, blue button, launch instance. And I'll do that. I'll click on launch instance and there I'm um, offered with different machine images. Uh, machine images is um, a, a, some kind of template that you use to create a new server. Once you have your server running, you can create a new image out of that server. And then if you have, if you need more servers of the same kind with exactly the same configuration, you can create, you can start five or six servers in a minute using the same image. So you select the image and then you click on launch more servers with this configuration. So Amazon has some images created for us. For example, the very first one, Amazon Linux is an image of Linux machine that has some things for us pre-configured. For example, it will have different command line tools. It will have Python, Ruby, Perl, and Java uh, already installed. And then it will have some of the technologies available for us for download from the repositories like PHP, MySQL, and PostgreSQL. Uh, so, and also please note that this Im image is available for free, is eligible for free if you are uh, a new Amazon Web Services uh, customer. So I think uh, if you're a new Amazon Web Services customer, you can have your server running for one year free of charge. So I will select this free tier eligible image, click on select button. And next, uh, we will select an instance type. And um, there are like nano, a very small uh, um, uh, computer instances, or there are large instances. Uh, we will select the one that's available, um, selected by default, and it's called micro, micro instance, and it is available for a free, eligible for free tier as well. And that instance will have one gigabyte of memory, and it will have an uh, elastic block storage associated with it. And uh, what it does, basically, Elastic Blue Storage um, is, uh, is a storage that is attached to your computer, but it doesn't save data on the hardware itself. It doesn't save data on your computer, uh, so that when you restart your computer, data is not uh, lost. This Elastic Blue Storage is external storage, uh, which you can back up and mount it to a different computer, for example. when you uh, don't need micro anymore, your uh, compute uh, needs uh, grew up and you have you need to start up a large instance with more memory on it, you can attach your elastic block storage to a new hardware. Um, uh, okay, so we will select the one which is by default and we will we can click on review and launch right now, but we will go through uh, some configurations a little. Again, I will not go into details for every single uh, configuration because this course is not about Amazon Web Services. We're learning how to quickly start up our new uh, small server with some basic configuration. Um, okay, so here on this page, you can leave most of it, most of it uh, as it is. Um, uh, not don't change anything. We're launching only one instance. 
Uh, we don't need um, spot instances. Uh, I'll read more about spot instances, but I don't think they're even available uh, with free tier. So leave it. Network, subnet, um, public IP address will be assigned to you. So don't change anything here. Um, shutdown behavior is something that you want to uh, use stop. So when you shut, shut down this computer, if you stop it, uh, then with EBS block with elastic blood storage, you will have your data stored. But if you terminate it, then it's gone. So don't don't terminate uh, instance uh, if you don't need it anymore completely. So uh, just uh, stop it and um, you can enable it uh, for uh, accidental termination. I don't choose that. Uh, and simply uh, let's uh, continue to the next step by um, choosing by tapping on add storage. Uh, here uh, with the eligible with the free tier, uh, we can have our uh, root volume, the uh, root volume uh, data up to um, 30 gigabytes of size. So uh, by default, it offers as eight. In my case, it was almost uh, enough for uh, all purposes because I'm not storing any data on the uh, computer itself. Like only configuration files, only PHP scripts, and eight gigabytes is very much enough for it. All images and videos I store in a different service, which is called Amazon S3. That's uh, that storage was defined uh, was designed to store large data like video files and images uh, and so on, like documents. Uh, we don't store data on computers, but if you do need more data, uh, you can increase it. Um, up to 30 gigabytes of EBS storage. Uh, okay, so I think, uh, yes, and one checkbox that uh, I also keep is delete on termination. I don't want it to be deleted on termination. I like to keep my EBS volume with configuration, like Apache web server configuration, MySQL configuration. So I like to keep it. So uncheck this delete on termination. Uh, box if you also like to keep it. Otherwise, once you terminate your instance, uh, it's gone. It will be deleted. Okay, uh, continue to the next um, step, which is tag your instance. And basically here we give uh, this uh, image a name. Uh, for example, I have one server with the tag uh, Swift developer blog. And this one I'm creating uh, specifically for my um, video course on how to build mobile app with Swift, PHP, and MySQL. I will uh, give this uh, a tag like video course server, something like this, so that when I uh, have a list of my servers, I can differentiate which server is which. Okay, so, and then I continue to security groups. And uh, security groups is basically a little firewall that you have uh, running, uh, that you have uh, configured for this uh, instance. You can give it also a name so that we can differentiate. I will give it uh, a name video course server security group, something like this. And uh, okay, the first option is SSH. If we want to connect to our computer remotely, for example, to install MySQL database and PHP, which we do need, uh, we can uh, leave it as is on port 22 by default. The important uh, option is this one, source. So if you want to connect to your uh, Linux machine on Amazon Cloud from anywhere, from your home, from your office, from a coffee shop, leave it as anywhere. But if you want to secure, for example, if you want to connect to your computer only from the location where you currently are right now, your current IP address, then select my IP. It will identify your IP address automatically. Just leave it as is then. Uh, or you can uh, provide custom IP addresses. For example, you uh, select custom IP address and you type in IP address of your office. And then you can add one more rule and then also select SSH and then type in another IP address. 
that you uh, IP address of another location. And then you will be able to connect to your uh, Linux machine from different locations. Okay, so we will need SSH and we will need, um, of course, uh, we will need HTTP. Uh, we want uh, our users to be able to connect to this. Um, and I mean, we want our mobile application to be able to connect to it on port 80. Um, sometimes but most of the times we will be connecting to it over HTTPS so through uh, a secure connection uh, SSL uh, so from anywhere right and um, let's look what we also have uh, HTTPS um, but uh, yes MySQL uh, you select this option if you want to connect to your MySQL database from a remote computer uh, on port 3306. For example, from your local developer's uh, station or developer's notebook, you can connect to MySQL database directly in the cloud. Uh, if you need this, um, then uh, um, select my IP address and um, port 3306. Uh, I don't need this because my PHP scripts uh, will be uploaded onto this server and they will be connecting to MySQL database from this server. So I'm not connecting to MySQL database from a remote computer. I will delete it. And I think this is all we need. Um, uh, three uh, options from the security group. I think this is all we need. Let me quickly look through it again. Yeah, let's leave it. If uh, we need something uh, else, we'll come back uh, and configure it. We always can add and change new security uh, group options anytime we want. So review and launch. What is it? Uh, the source needs to be block or security group. Oh, I've left something. So custom IP, I'll choose my IP address. HTTP anywhere, HTTPS anywhere. Okay, so review and launch. Okay, now the last step is to review what we currently selected. So we have a um, micro instance with one gigabyte of memory uh, with Elastic Blosk storage config available for us. We have configured security group. We can connect to our computer through SSH. Uh, and we can connect to it. Uh, we can send HTTP requests and HTTPS requests from anywhere. Okay, so we have um, uh, these are just instance details. Oh, by the way, yes, availability zone. Uh, you can launch instances in different availability zones. And what these are is basically if you have your target audience, if most of your target users are, for example, in Asia, then you want your server to be running in Asia. And Amazon will have this instance running from Asia. But if most of your users, for example, are in the United States and maybe they are in California, then you will uh, use this, uh, you will select um, availability zone uh, California. Even though I've selected uh, US, California, um, I can connect, I mean, uh, my mobile application can communicate with this server from all around the world. It will still be available. It's just, it will respond faster to users um, from California. Uh, and um, yes, yeah, so when you log in into your on Amazon Web Services console, make sure uh, you have correct availability zone selected because sometimes uh, you play with it and then you forget which one you've selected and then you look for your server in uh, Asia or in US West, for example, but you have it actually configured for California. So it, it's easy to, to lose your uh, instance uh, in those groups. Okay, so uh, availability zone is uh, US uh, and then uh, storage is 8 gigabyte by default and tags, it's going to be called video course server. Okay, this is it. So I'm ready to launch it. I will tap on launch button and um, you know, this step is very important. Select an existing key pair. Now, uh, because Linux machine that we are launching will not have password, 
uh, we will need to have a keeper to access it securely. Uh, and um, if you don't have one, you will need to choose create a new keeper. If you do have one, you will need to select existing for this availability zone. If you launch servers in different availability zones, you will need to create keeper for each availability zone. But uh, and we are launching one server in US, California, so um, we will create only one keeper. Uh, and I'm going to create a new keeper. I will call it video course server. And it's very important that we download it now. There will be no other time we can download this file. Uh, download this file and uh, save it in a place that you won't forget and lose. This is very important. You, if you don't have this uh, file, you cannot connect to your Amazon uh, Linux machine anymore. Okay, so we have downloaded Keeper. Now we will be able to connect to our server and now we can launch an instance. Okay, it will take a few seconds actually for this instance to launch. It's pretty quickly. Uh, so let's go back to Amazon Web Services console and I will click on EC2. And we will click on instances. And I have one instance which is stopped for Swift Developer Block and I see that Video Course Server is currently launching. So the status is pending and it's initializing. We have public DNS. We have public IP available to it. A launch time, security groups. And if I select this row now, I have the same details, all this configuration that I've um, used to create this instance available to me below here so this is it so it says that the instance state is now running so i should be able to connect to it uh, with my uh, security key that i've downloaded video course server